In this video, I want to answer the question, what is big data? Big data is three things in one. When we use the term big data, we could be referring to any one of three things. The scale of big data sets, the discipline of capturing storing and analyzing those big data sets or the technology that allows us to do this. However, all of these are deeply connected. So let's roll up our sleeves and dip our arms deep into the subject of big numbers. And since we're going to need to use some very big numbers indeed, let's give ourselves a little reminder for those who don't remember or never really understood scientific notation. Scientific notation starts with a number 10 because we have 10 digits. We can write the number 10 as 10 to the power of one because there's only one lot of it. And we can write 10 times 10 as 10 to the power of two. We most commonly write this as 10 with 2 as a superscript after it. But when we don't have easy access to a superscript symbol, we can also write 10 and then a carré and then 2. Both of these mean 10 to the power of 2, which means 10 times 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 to the power of 3 and equals 1000. 10 to the power of 4 or 10 to the 4 is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 or 10,000 and so on. You get the picture. The next thing we need to understand is data and data comes in bits and bytes. A bit is a single unit of information but outside of some elements of software engineering and logic, we more often work in terms of bytes. And a byte is eight bits, eight units of information. Now, since a bit can represent two possibilities, on or off, one or zero, then a byte can code for two times two times two, times two, times two, times two, times two, times two possibilities. We can write this as two to the power of eight. And two to the power of eight is 256. A byte can code for 256 different possible configurations. Now we can combine our knowledge of scientific notation and bits and bytes. 1000 bytes is 10 to the 3 bytes, or 1 kilobyte. We write this as 1kb, with the small k standing for kilo. And this notation makes it very easy to represent vast numbers. If 1 kilobyte is 10 to the 3 bytes, then one megabyte is 10 to the six bytes. And one gigabyte is 10 to the nine bytes. And one terabyte is 10 to the 12 bytes. And for consumer level or domestic data storage, the current state of the art tends to be terabyte scale disks. A new computer may come with a hard drive of one, two, or three terabytes. But of course, if we're working with big data, we need bigger numbers. 10 to the power of 12 is small compared to the scale of data that big data represents. A petabyte is 10 to the 15 bytes. And an exabyte is 10 to the 18 bytes. A zettabyte is 10 to the 21 bytes. And a yottabyte is 10 to the 24 bytes. 10 to the 24 
is equal to 10 to the 12 times 10 to the 12. So a yottabyte is like a tera terabyte. Unfortunately, these numbers are pretty unimaginable. But let's see if we can understand some of them in human terms. A typical high school or secondary school will have somewhere like one or two thousand students. That's one or two times ten to the power of three, or one or two kilo students. Sports stadia tend to hold tens of thousands of people, and a huge sports stadium might hold a hundred thousand people. That's ten to the power of five. And our big cities hold millions of people. The biggest cities might hold 10, 12 million people of the order of 10 to the power of 7. There are plenty of countries with 100 million people, which is 10 to the power of 8. And the planet Earth is moving in the direction of 10 billion people, 10 to the power of 10 human beings, or 10 giga people. Now, a typical book might have between 50 and 100,000 words. Let's call it 100,000. That's 10 to the 5. But how many books do we find in a library? A large municipal library might have as many as 100,000 books. That's another 10 to the 5, giving us a total of 10 to the 10 words. But national libraries have millions of books, maybe 10 million or even more. 10 million is 10 to the power of 10. So with 10 to the power of 7 books, each with 10 to the power of 5 words, that's 10 to the power of 12 words in a large national library. Now at a byte per letter, that's something like 10 terabytes of information in a national library. But now, the human world is configuring itself more around raw data than it is around books, and our ability to create and store data has been exploding over the last 40 years or so. Happily, our ability not just to create it, but to store it has been increasing to keep pace. Where once a computer might have cost the average worker a month's salary, now we can buy a computer far more powerful with a lot more memory and put it in our pockets for perhaps a week's salary. The digital cameras that families might have used 20 to 30 years ago could hold hundreds of images, each of a few megabytes in size. Now the camera in your pocket, yes, that same computer, can store tens of thousands of images, each with many millions of points of colour. I don't know whether they're available, but it won't be long before you can get a terabyte of data on your phone. But those are just consumer examples. Typical corporations work in terms of petabytes. And the big corporations, the ones that manage our digital existence online, are increasingly managing in exabytes and zettabytes and soon yottabytes. But do we need all this data? Businesses and governments use this data to make predictions and decisions. Commercial organisations use the data to make products and to make sales. By analysing these vast arrays of data, they can answer questions about things like operational efficiency, customer behaviour, new products, causes of failure financial trading, fraud and criminality, demand for commodities, and on and on and on. The list of information and data and the things you can do with it is seemingly endless. And let's not forget that artificial intelligence is trained on these huge data sets. So let's get to the point. What is big data? I said at the opening that big data is really three things. It's the, it's the scale of the data that we store. It's our ability to store it. And it's the infrastructure and technology we use. 
It's the first of these that we most often use when we're talking about big data. So here's my working definition of big data. Big data means the immense data sets that we can analyze to reveal patterns, trends, and correlations to help us make predictions and therefore decisions about human behavior and the systems we've created. But there's another definition that deserves our attention. Near the start of the big data revolution, the analysis firm Gartner Group gave this definition. Big data is data that contains greater variety arriving in increasing volumes and with ever higher velocity. With this definition, they coined the three V's of big data, variety, volume, and velocity. These are core to understanding what big data really is. More recently, other organizations have added additional V's, as you might expect. The two most common are variability and veracity. So let's look at all five. First of all, variety. Modern data comes in a huge variety of different forms like text, images, video, audio, financial data, numerical data, and biographical data. Next is volume, which is measured in bytes and multiples of bytes, as we've already just seen. This volume comes from multiple sources. Sources such as government records, financial transactions, value chain handoffs, social media, metadata around other information, remote detection and sensing, things like video and audio, and machine-to-machine -machine interactions. Velocity is about the speed with which data is created and stored. Data creation is constant and in real time. Indeed, now it is stored and analyzed in real time across millions and millions of sources. Next is variability, because the flow of these big streams of data can vary from minute to minute, hour to hour. It is completely inconstant. The peaks and troughs will have some predictable elements to them and other random elements that we cannot predict. There are seasonal patterns and there are chaotic bursts of information. And of course, information flows also vary with politics and social changes. The final V is veracity or truth. This is about the quality of the data. Does the data truly reflect the reality that it purports to represent? Big data presents us with big challenges. On the plus side, these huge data sets give us a very high degree of statistical significance. But there are problems too. Variability, variety, veracity, velocity introduce a huge level of complexity, which makes analyzing the data in a reliable way and extracting information and knowledge from it a huge challenge. False interpretations abound. And if we want to simplify the data, the huge challenge is this. How do we know which data we can safely exclude to simplify our data set without introducing a new bias or a new misinterpretation? And there's also a massive cost to acquiring and storing all of this data. And it's not just a financial cost, there is a cost to the environment manufacturing the equipment and in providing it with the energy it needs to run and dealing with the heat that it generates and dumps into our atmosphere. Big data creates massive amounts of carbon dioxide. It uses a lot of natural resources and it heats the planet. It may be that we rely upon big data to solve some of the world's biggest problems. But let's not forget that it also creates some of them as well. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. 
I'll be creating loads more great management courses videos for you. So please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you don't miss any of them. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.